Rotor Relief has been inspired by Marcel Duchamp's Rotor Reliefs, which were created in the 1920s that you can see on screen now. And I've also been heavily influenced by the op art of Rigid Riley. This is what you will see when you first load Rotor Reliefs into your Resolume document. Rotor Relief has been created so that it evolves slowly over time, creating an ever-changing animation that doesn't necessarily loop. This is very useful for more experimental kinds of music, to use as background layers, or to animate to FFT to create a tailor-made video. I'm going to have a little play now with the animation so you can get a feel for how different the animations can look simply by tweaking its settings. So. I'll explain what these settings do in a bit, but just so that you get an idea of the range of different effects that you can get and the different looks just by sliding things up and down. Rotor Relief comes with a number of presets, which are a great starting point to start tweaking and creating your own custom animation. You go to little p here, you've got anaglyph. Anemone, Bronia, Cartoon, Energize, Escher Sketch, Flower of Life. Scribble, Strobe, Sunset, Triscoll, and Sotrope, which is the one that loads when you first load the source. Bear in mind that, as I've pointed out, the cycles of the animations are extremely long and randomized. So each one of those presets has a very, very long evolving animation, which cannot be judged from the few seconds that you're looking at here. The speed of the animation in Rotor Relief is uh, tied to your BPM. So the faster your BPM setting over here, the faster the animation will go. I've got 120 BPM at the moment, but if I type 300, you see that it speeds up in relation to that BPM setting. Let's go through the settings. The first one we've got is particle size, which will increase the size of the single particle that creates the entire animation. That particle is basically a circle that's got a hole in the middle, which can be made bigger or smaller to the point where it disappears. Right now it's tiny, but if we make it bigger, you can see that it hollows out, making it more of like a toroid kind of shape and doing so radically changes the look of the overall animation. What Lift does is it increases the distance between the colors that you see here. The particles are replicated and there's an instant of each particle with one of the different colors that you've got in the color settings. Lift increases the distance between them. By doing this, you can change uh, the overall style of the animation, very graphic style, cartoonish and vector-like. If I play with the lift, you'll see how it just collapses all the colors until you just see how they blend together. A good tip is to incorporate some transparency into some of your colors, and that will affect the way the colors blend together, achieving all kinds of effects that might not be immediately obvious when you start using the plugin. You can see it really does change the way it looks just by changing the overall lift. Next, you've got Glow, which is going to enhance the brighter parts of your animation, giving them a lighting effect. And you've got Spread A, which has got a positive and a negative value. And you've got Spread B. I've changed what I was doing here, so this is more obvious. So as you see, Spread B makes the particles have a much wider range of motion. Then we've got the animation settings, which relate to the motion that you can see happening. So you can increase the rotation, 
the lighting, which is similar to the rotation, but it's independent from it. So you can have the lighting rotating through the shapes at one speed and the overall rotation of the elements at a completely different speed. This is really good for achieving stroke-like effects. Then we've got motion. Motion is what will decide how fast the evolving uh, nature of rotor is. You'll go from a very gradual change in shape to this. So you can see here, rotor relief has got a built-in trail effect that helps transition between very jerky motion, giving a nice kind of stop frame kind of effect. And if you slow it down, you can just see this trailing. Next up, we've got colors. You've got four different colors that you can select to your liking. As I said earlier, I suggest that you use HSB mode when doing that because the alpha will really affect the way the colors interact with each other. Next, we've got the instances. These parameters cannot be animated. That's why they've only got the plus and minus buttons on it because of the way the wire works. And uh, basically it needs to re-initiate the whole patch if you change any of these factors. These are best said by typing in whatever value you want, unless you're just increasing minimal values on it. So if we just put 12 in there, you'll see that it radically changes what we're seeing here. And to finalize this video, I'm gonna leave you with this composition, which is basically rotor reliefs with some FFT and some animated parameters to create an evolving animation that goes with the music.